Hey there, if you've been following this channel long enough, or maybe seen me perform live, or maybe even watched me wander around the Acoustic Room at Guitar Center through a scope from your sniper's nest to top the lighting truss, then you've probably noticed that I play a little, well, differently. You see, sir, I do play the guitar backwards, or upside down, or inverted, or topsy-turvy, meaning that the high E string is closest to my face, and the low E string is closest to my penis. Now, if you are a guitarist and you see this and your initial reaction is, so what? Then you are truly a unique person because my entire life people have been either telling me that it's wrong, pointless, stupid, gimmicky, or it's been wildly creative, innovative, eccentric. It's very rarely in the gray area between those things. So. Pick your team now and I'll hand out the jerseys after this video. So over the years, performing as a flashbulb and having this channel, as you can imagine, I've been asked a lot of questions regarding this. And most of those questions can be answered by simply telling you my topsy-turvy guitar story. If you haven't figured it out by now, I am left-handed. And when I was about five years old, I went to the Wisconsin State Fair with my grandfather and he bought me a nylon string little toy guitar that was strung for normal right-handed players. About a year or two later for Christmas, a cousin gave me a full-size electric guitar. And it was years after that when I remember seeing a music video on television that had a close-up of a fretboard and it was some sort of hair metal band and they were playing the opposite way that I was playing. And the thing that I thought in my head at that time was that, oh, people who look like that play the guitar that way. Eventually, I got pretty dang good at guitar for a child. And once a year, I would walk up on a stage by myself and play solo guitar bone dry to all of my classmates at the talent show. And every year I would win. And still, not one person noticed that I was playing upside down. To be totally honest, I don't remember the oh shit moment when I figured out that I was playing the wrong way. But because I don't remember it, I assume my reaction was just, heh, well, I'm too deep in playing it backwards now, so I'll just stick to this. I didn't really know that many musicians when I was a teenager, but I do remember a couple times going to a music shop and asking a salesperson to play some really nice, expensive guitar, and then they'd hand it to me, and I'd turn it around and play it backwards and be like, oh, no, 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 give that back, and then I'd just start playing Eruption or something. But as I got to my late teens and started networking with more and more musicians, especially in the jazz world, at best, it got treated like a gimmick, and at worst, I got vibed pretty hard about it. I'm gonna have to do a video on vibing someday, but for now, let's just call it a controversial form of bullying that exists within the jazz musician hierarchy. Another example of where this had given me some problems. So I guess to be totally candid, I grew up kind of a hood rat. I dropped out of high school, and when I was 19 or 20, I applied for a scholarship for University of Montana to study guitar under Christopher Parkening, and I got it. I got a full ride, and then they took it away when they found out that I played upside down. And by the way, don't feel sorry for me. I'm really glad things turned out the way that they did, and I completely understand why a classical music program would not be able to have somebody that played so untraditionally. So naturally, over the years, as I started making a decent living off of music and making a bit of a name for myself, this judgment and vibing sort of faded into the occasional musician thinking that I played this way on purpose so I could play more interesting chords. But nope. I didn't know any better, and I was just too stubborn to start over. So playing this way means that I'm comfortable with different chords and I'm comfortable with different chord inversions. So obviously that means that it has changed the way that I write music for a guitar, but I've never really paid that much attention to it. In fact, as far as I could recall, this is the first time on the internet or any media platform where I was the first person to bring it up. I'm definitely not embarrassed of it, but I don't really focus on it because I have no intention of using the unorthodox way that I play the guitar as a gimmick to drum up attention to my music. So how uncommon is it actually? Some people call it Jimi Hendrix style and when people see the way that I play they reference Jimi Hendrix which is expected because for some reason the entire world believes that Jimi Hendrix played with the strings upside down or inverted. And if you believe this, I don't blame you. It's not your fault. It is common Jimi Hendrix trivia that he played this way, except that he didn't. Was Jimi left-handed? Yes. Did Jimmy play either a lefty guitar or a guitar that was modified to where the headstock and direction was facing the inverted way? Yes. Did Jimmy play where the strings were inverted, where the high E was closest to his head and the low E was closest to the floor? 
No. He played left-handed guitar. His chord fingerings were traditional. Now, don't get me wrong. Nothing else about Jimi Hendrix was traditional. In an alternate universe where Jimi Hendrix never existed, music is a lot shittier. But let the record show Jimi Hendrix did not play the guitar with the strings upside down. Oddly enough, the first time that I encountered anyone who played the guitar upside down was at one of my favorite restaurants in Chicago, an Argentine joint called El Nandu. At El Nandu on weekends, there's an older gentleman who plays classical and Spanish style guitar over backing tracks on a little stage. So true story, one day while eating there, while listening to him playing for like the hundredth time in my life, I looked over and I realized, holy shit, he's playing inverted guitar. And after that song, I went up to him and I told him, hey, I play the same way you do. And he didn't believe me. And I swore up and down that I did. And he finally handed me his guitar to prove it. So I stood up on the little stage and I showed him. And then he just went outside and took a break and left me performing in front of this restaurant. So after that experience, which ended up fine, by the way, I still see that guy every single time I go back to Chicago. I started paying more attention to how people were playing the guitar and realized that there were quite a few of us inverted players out there. And I could go down a list of like a dozen that I found, but one that really stands out to me and probably my favorite inverted guitar player is Miche Fambro. Miche is a jazz vocalist, but he's also a jazz guitarist and he has an incredibly skilled, melodically complex and soft and touching style that I guess I would compare to the softer pieces that you would hear Joe Pass play. He's one of those old school musicians that just has a library of material in their head and could just entertain an audience indefinitely. And what I love about him the most is that with all of this knowledge and skill, he just completely sweeps the inverted playing thing under the rug. He doesn't use it as a gimmick. He doesn't even really talk about it. And you are in luck. Miche Fambro has a YouTube channel and whether you're a guitarist or not, you should let him serenade you. I'll put a link in the description and maybe even a little card up here on the screen. Another thing to note that's a little interesting to me is that most of the backwards or inverted players that I've encountered are older than I am. And I'm pretty old, I'm a Generation Xer. And I guess that kind of makes sense because I think I had been playing guitar for nine or 10 years before residential internet became a thing. And I imagine now when a kid picks up the guitar, they kind of go to YouTube or WikiHow. All right, so what are the pros and cons of playing the guitar this way? Before we get into the weeds here, I just want to say that if you're thinking about learning how to play the guitar and undecided on which way you want to play, let me make that decision really easy for you. This is just my opinion and I'm going to be totally blunt. I cannot imagine anybody making the conscious decision to play the guitar upside down and not regretting it down the line. There are some quirky small perks and there are some big giant discouraging cons. Here's a big con, unless you are customizing a guitar, the quarter inch output is always going to be in your armpit, your breast, your rib, depending on what kind of guitar you're playing and the size of your body. You will likely go through a lot of guitar cables and even a lot of guitar output jacks. And yes, I mean even premium cables. Megami cables break very easily when you constantly smash them by playing like this. Here's another con that is very closely related to the last one, but in my opinion, a much bigger pain in the ass. All of these knobs and this pickup switch, when I play the guitar, they're moving all the time. They're always moving a little bit. And when I play the guitar on stage or live, that's actually going to become a pretty big problem, particularly when you have a pickup switch that pops. Here's a pro. Aside from these annoyances over here, if you're a lefty, you can pick up pretty much any right-handed guitar and play. Left-handed guitars that you actually like are hard to come by, and when you do find them, they often cost more and are on back order. Con. Power chords or two to three string bar chords are a great way for beginners to learn how to play music, especially rock music, because they use power chords so often. However, if you are playing upside down, you have to hit those chords finger by finger because they're there is no bar. For example, a power chord with my low E was up on top here would just be like that. However, I have to do this. Here's a pro to that. Making power chords finger by finger allows you to add in a fourth note without getting too tangled up, which for example, here's a G power chord, but now I can make a G major power chord very easily with just this middle finger or a G minor. For someone learning guitar, this probably accelerates your understanding of harmony a bit faster than just learning which fret to play the root note of your power chord to. For example, Smells Like Teen Spirit in all major. Smells Like Teen Spirit in all minor. 
Here's a con. When playing power chords or root chords, it's actually pretty easy to accidentally ring out the E or B string, which ends up creating a sort of harmonic comfort zone. For example, if you were writing a song that had a B major 7 go to a C sharp major 7, if you hit that E, it would sound rotten. <laughs> So if I decide to move that small progression up a semitone to C major 7 to D major 7, now if I accidentally hit that E, it's going to sound perfectly fine, if not even accentuate the chord a bit better. Therefore, giving me a harmonic comfort zone. There's a flip side or a devil's advocate to that con that actually gives birth to a pro. When ringing out the E or B works, it actually sounds fantastic and actually adds a whole bunch of more body to your chords. Of course, a skilled guitarist could achieve this playing the normal way. However, it would be a lot more difficult, not quite as natural, because their palm would be muting those top strings, so they'd have to kind of stand off. Con, if you want to play those high-pitched rock solos, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because your fingers are from the farthest part from the rest of your hand on the fretboard. It's a lot easier for me to play fast and make pulls on the lower strings. <laughs> Here's a pro. When I do play high-pitched solos and I want to make a big, expressive bend, I'm able to pull in the strings with my grip rather than pushing, which is actually a stronger muscle. This is actually a terrible guitar to use for this particular example because I have really thick gauge strings on it, but I can take four fingers and have my pinky on the note I want to play and then just pull it in. I actually think that this is why my style is a little bit more bluesy when I don't even really like blues all that much. I normally would just want to seek notes like... But just being able to make pulls like that easily and effortlessly probably gravitates me towards more string bendy playing. Even with just one finger, pulling is always going to be more powerful than pushing. This is a huge con. If you play the guitar upside down and if you find a qualified guitar teacher that is willing to take you on, that teacher is either going to be compromising their usual curriculum or they're going to be just going along with your unorthodox style because they need the money. In addition to this, you've already heard from me how discriminatory higher music education can be in reference to guitarists who play upside down, and with that I'm almost positive that they're not going to hire an upside down guitarist. I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass here, but I would imagine that 99.99% .99 of guitar students play the traditional way, and if you are looking for a teaching gig, you're going to be competing with a whole bunch of guitarists that played the traditional way. Con, if you come across one of those super common dime a dozen guitar chord books or even those posters that show you how to play certain guitar chords, they're really hit or miss if you play unorthodox. For example, I would love to be able to play a G chord like this, but nope, I have to wrap my thumb around the top to play it. That being said, over the decades, you do get used to shit like this and it just becomes second nature. <laughs> Pro, and this is probably the biggest pro for me. When you have to learn chords this way, you end up making your own shortcuts, which end up being chord inversions. And one thing that I really, really like is string inversions, which is where you play the same note, but on a different string, giving it a different tone. For example, the traditional D chord is kind of meh. It only uses four strings. It's down here in this area that sounds kind of sharp and is hard to have much vibrato and stuff like that. And most pop songs sort of ride between the F sharp and the E on that top string, so. So with the guitar strung backwards, the way that I always approached playing a D is up here on the fifth fret on the A string, and I can actually play that F sharp and that E at the same time. And that actually uses a lower string here, so it sounds a bit more full, and it actually allows for a bit more finger picking. So with my hand up here on the fifth fret on the D, I'm actually gifted almost an additional octave of notes that I could choose in a chord inversion. So if I wanted to uh, move my finger up on the seventh fret on the E, I could actually play a D6. D6 down here the traditional way. And then while we're up here, if we wanted to go to even more advanced chords like a D major 13th, uh, or even different voicings of that D major 13th, now, the traditional way of playing a D major 13th is really skimping on it. It's just sort of... You could add in the A as well, but then that just sounds muddy, probably. 
Um, yeah, nah. I could probably spend all day citing similar examples, but the overall point, in my case anyway, is that playing this way makes me way more intimate with this region of the guitar, with the thicker strings up high, whereas the traditional way of playing, at least for beginners, guides you to always be down here. And again, if you're letting A and B ring out and you're paying attention to that melodically when you're playing, you really get to get the best of both worlds here. And finally, this is just something I tell everybody who's telling me that they want to learn how to play the guitar, whether you're learning how to play my unorthodox way or the traditional way. Don't use tablature. Learn your chords. Learn what all of these keys are. And then basically learn what kind of finger positions you have to use for uh, the specific variations of those chords. And everything just becomes way easier. In fact, while I'm eating dinner, I'm going to think of a recognizable song to give you an A versus B example. All right, I think I figured out a good song to compare the traditional way a guitar is strung to my unorthodox way. And that would be You Belong to Me, which was initially written in the 50s from Pee Wee King and a whole bunch of artists covered it. And the one that sticks out in my head the most is Bob Dylan's version. So I'm going to try and play it as close to memory as Bob Dylan did in his performance of it. <laughs> So the places I had the most trouble were definitely in the F bar chord, F major and F minor. Like that's just, ugh, I have to really prop myself down on that. And then mostly the D minor. Ah, <laughs> I even hit it wrong in this example. When it's up to me, I hit a D minor on the fifth fret of the A string. And then I can even add a higher note to the inversion. All right, so I'm going to play the same song, and I'm going to start it on a C the same way Bob Dylan did, but I'm going to do it in a way that I would naturally just want to play it if I were to look at the chord charts. All right, now I'm going to go through the chorus, or I feel so alone without you is where the lyrics would be. And I'm going to do that in my way, and then I'm just going to sort of loop it back to the verse, playing it Bob Dylan's way. So to be totally fair, I don't even know how helpful it was to walk through that song. I don't know how much of that was me playing upside down or me just being more of a jazz-oriented musician, but hopefully that gave somebody an idea of how you would approach that song a little bit differently if you had to fret all of the chords differently. So now, of course, with my topsy-turvy story, I did not answer all of the questions. So there are a few specific ones that I will handle now. Wave and Particle says, I really like that name, Are you familiar with the popular finger picking style called Travis picking, where the thumb plays an alternating bass line with the picking patterns? If so, how do you navigate those patterns when the bass strings are on the opposite side and away from your thumb? So Travis picking, part of me wants to like run into the other room and learn it really fast and be like, oh yeah, I know how to Travis pick, but I actually don't. I know it's a very sort of folky, campfirey style of picking, and it's just never really suited my music that much. I think some of the picking used in northern Mexican mariachi styles sound a little bit like Travis picking. <laughs> I have a little camera recording here at a higher speed frame rate, and I'll just try and do some more advanced finger picking methods so you could see what's actually going on.
So I think most finger picking patterns are somewhere between totally doable and a little bit more difficult to learn. There are a few that come to mind that I definitely could not play upside down, like the flamenco style of finger picking called picado. Uh, that's totally virtually impossible from an inverted standpoint. Uh, I suppose I could learn Picado the wrong way and write a bunch of classical songs that nobody else would ever be able to play, but you only got so much time in the day. All right, so this question may need a little bit of context for most of my viewers. A couple weeks ago, I posted an Instagram story stating that I am learning alternate picking and de-learning economy picking. And so I have uh, quite a few people asking me why I'm doing that, how it's going, what BPM I'm playing at. So. The reason why I'm doing that is because economy picking is not very rhythmic. It's just focused on, well, economy and just playing faster. And I want to play uh, more rhythmically in my leads and I want to be able to swing a bit better. And so I was making that transition and it's very, very difficult to go from one to the other because now I'm just going back and forth and I it almost feels like a Neanderthal. It feels so weird. <laughs> But get this, I actually hate using picks, a whole lot. And I kept wondering to myself, would it be easier to learn sort of my three finger bass technique, but it's just too imprecise for something where the strings are as close together as a normal guitar. And all of a sudden I'm starting to really like chicken picking. I'm trying to make this visible from where the camera's at. I kind of like it. I may just ditch the pick forever. All right, Jacob A. Stevens or more appropriately considering the questions, Jaco Bass Stevens asks, why is bass so much cooler than guitar? One, because good skilled bassists are much rarer than good skilled guitarists. Two, because bass is more rhythmic. Three, because of Victor Wooten. And four, because of Jaco Pastorius. All right, Quacktastic Axe. Quacktastic Axe. <laughs> Quack tactic, quack tastic asks. That's actually really difficult to say. So quack tactic cracks. Being an inverted player, how did it affect learning studying jazz, where many songs are hard enough to play normally? Did you have to rewrite songs to fit your playing or did it just fall into place naturally? That's a really good question. In my opinion, jazz is by far the most welcoming and suited genre for untraditionally playing any instrument because Rather than being told how to rigorously play something, you're just given a, you know, like in a real book or a fake book, you just have chord suggestions. It doesn't matter what chord inversions you use, it doesn't matter what kind of phrasing you use, and it doesn't even matter if you use those exact chords, which is what reharmonizing is. In fact, when playing anything from rock to blues to classical guitar, where you actually have the music sitting in front of you, I can't sight read in real time. And at first I thought I just had some sort of brain aneurysm whenever I tried to do it, but the real problem is, is that I'm sight reading for an instrument that I'm virtually not playing. I'm playing a different instrument because everything's strung the other way. Yoshiyuki Endo says, I want to know more about your two-handed tapping technique. I've seen it before. So firstly, it's very much a poorly executed, pathetic, blatant ripoff of Stanley Jordan style, who I'm obviously not related to, but Stanley Jordan is the two-handed tapping God. For anybody unfamiliar with Stanley Jordan, go check him out. You will be in awe. He is an extremely eccentric and innovative jazz guitar player from South Chicago. I believe Stanley's career saw the most acclaim in the late 80s or early 90s, and then jazz being the Titanic and Kenny G being the iceberg. We all know how that went. And then he went to study music healing for a really long time. And then in like the last decade, he sort of popped up again. But to answer your question, I would fine tune a compressor on the end of this guitar. And then with my bass notes being down here and more easily accessible with this hand, and then my higher notes being more easily accessible with this hand, uh, it all just kind of works itself out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound nearly as good as it would with a compressor amp, reverb, nine gauge strings on a low action guitar, but you get the drift. Leon Ragdoll asks, have you ever played other touch instruments like the Chapman stick or war guitar? 
Unfortunately, due to their rarity and price, I have not. Of course, if one of those manufacturers want to send me one to see how an inverted guitarist fares on one, I'd be more than happy to play with it and do a video on it. But until that happens, I think if I'm gonna be spending thousands of dollars on a new instrument, especially a touchy lappy instrument, it will be a pedal steel guitar and a couple more hundred thousand subscribers and I will do that. Lemon Father asks, do you and Amber Bain, the Japanese house, ever trade ideas? She plays inverted guitar. I had actually never heard of this musician, but I should have because now that I gave it a listen, her stuff sounds pretty excellent. So Amber or Japanese or whatever your first name is, if you ever wanna compare how many quarter inch cables we destroyed by sticking them into our ribs, hit me up. Scray Demanded 1232 says, if I remember correctly, your dad is also a guitarist. Did he play inverted guitar too? If not, did he ever teach you stuff? And how can the two methods learn from one another? So this goes a bit into personal territory. I feel like if we're going into personal territory, I gotta move the camera closer. All right, so this is a true story about me that I find profoundly fascinating. I didn't meet my biological father until I was 30 years old. He's from downstate Georgia. I grew up in Southside Chicago from when I was too young to remember. And turns out he's a guitarist. He plays the right way. We play very different styles. And I'm sure that that's because our influences and the spectrum of culture that we grew up around is entirely different. He plays a sort of rock, singer-songwriter, country, folky style. I play more of a jazz and gospel style. All right, so get this, he's super into visual art. He does sketches by hand that he sells and makes money from, and he's not that into painting or anything like that. Now, when I was a kid and a teenager, up until I was an adult and became a professional musician, I loved sketching by hand, but I never really liked painting all that much. And now I'm super into doing 3D simulation stuff. We're both very into SLR photography. We're both very outdoorsy. Despite the drastically different cultures that we grew up in, we are probably closest to egalitarian libertarians on the political spectrum. We both like straight bourbon. The list goes on and on, but all this is just really fascinating to me because I think that it's a little bit more than coincidental. I think that this is actually a really strong case for how powerful genetics are. All right, I think this video has got to be like half an hour of me talking at this point. I think I covered all of the questions. If I didn't cover yours, I apologize. If you play guitar inverted or upside down, let me know. I have a lot of cool stuff planned for the near future in this channel. I also have a lot of gear that I want to show you. So as always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. Hey, do you like music? I bet you like music. If you like music and you want to support me or this channel, I have like over 23 hours of music on Bandcamp and or if you want to follow me on Instagram or ClickCock or whatever the kids are using these days, I post a lot of gear related and outdoorsy content. The links for all of these things can be found in the description right down there. And as always, thanks for watching and bye. You were expecting some sort of zoom out thing, weren't you?